All set. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to the um, September 17th, 2020 meeting of the Albany Common Council's Planning, Land Use, and Economic Development Committee meeting. Uh, committee members present, myself, Kathy Fahey, Chair, um, also Tom Hoey, Councilmember Tom Hoey, Councilmember Joyce Love. Uh, we have um, Councilmember Alfredo Ballerin, other council members present, President Pro Tem Kelly Kimbrough, Councilmember Richard Conti, and uh, we also have committee member, council member Judy Doshe. Uh, we also have our staff, John Raphael Pichardo and Michelle Andre. And uh, we have um, Sarah Reginelli and Tracy Metzger from uh, the IDA. And um, we're here tonight to interview candidates for the Industrial Development Agency Board. Um, let's see. So uh, maybe we can start, Sarah, by uh, we had a little conversation, a little conversation about uh, the responsibilities of the candidates and the terms. Um, Maybe you can talk a little bit about that, the role, their role on the IDA board. Muted. I started right off by being muted before I was talking. Um, I'd be happy to talk through the role. I know Tracy uh, is with us as well uh, as the chair of the board uh, who can speak a little bit more to uh, some of the desired characteristics. Oh, good. Uh, Thank you, Tracy. For, uh, for that uh, were provided in the letter. Um, so would you like to start with that or would you like to start with the role either? Oh uh, no, Tracy, why not, how about the, um, well, I have to start with the role first, Sarah, and then we'll talk about the, the characteristics that we're looking for. Sure, um, the, uh, the Industrial Development Agency I mean, its sister organization, the CRC, uh, the mission of uh, the group you've been uh, provided, but essentially um, it's enhancing the diversity of the economy uh, in the city of Albany uh, through supporting projects that create and or retain jobs or promote uh, private investment throughout the city. Um, the board really sees itself as, a, uh, the, frankly, the most important economic development tool uh, in implementing our neighborhood revitalization strategies, as well as advancing the economy uh, in the city of Albany. Uh, to do that, it is an incredibly intensive role. Uh, in 2019, uh, there were 41 board and committee uh, meetings and public hearings that uh, board members attended. And uh, typically uh, the board members, the full contingent of board members do attend all of the committee meetings uh, as well. Uh, it is a volunteer position. Um, there's a significant amount of analysis that goes into um, both uh, project review um, for the, you know, between five and a dozen projects per year uh, that come in front of the agency. Uh, as well as ongoing project monitoring of the 100 plus uh, active projects that are monitored by the agency. Um, we also do quite a bit of policy development uh, and research, market research, market analysis. Um, and then there's obviously the fiduciary responsibility to the board. So handling the financial audit every year, helping to manage the staff and guide them uh, in, their, uh, in their directions. The board places a high priority on accountability, integrity, and transparency. Um, and that includes not only reporting to a number of oversight bodies, including the authority's budget office and the office of the state comptroller, um, but also ensuring a very transparent and rigorous review again of each of the projects. And that is um, both a um, very intensive financial analysis, uh, real estate development analysis, as well as a cost benefit analysis uh, for each, uh, each project in front of the board, ultimately with the goal of pr uh, providing community benefit. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, Tracy, we have a member who has left, so we are looking for, I know on the board, you try to find a balance of skills and ex expertise. You talk a little bit about the characteristics or skills, experience you're looking for in a candidate? Sure, of course, Sarah just took some of the wind out of my sails. <laughs> um, but, uh, but okay, um, but we are now looking for hopefully two board members with the recent resignation of uh, Dominic uh, at the end of the year. I think we have a great pool of candidates here 
Um, but I will just, I just kind of developed some written talking points that I'll be very brief on. But um, diversity, of course, is really important to us because we need diversity with respect to the voices that we hear that will lead to a better decision. If we're all speaking from the same, you know, cloth, if you will, um, it, it, it's, it's not good. So diversity from a community standpoint, from a background standpoint, is, is critical to help us um, make the right decisions. Um, economic development experience is really important, and particularly because it helps shorten the, the learning curve. Um, it is significant when you're evaluating the, the um, financial uh, worthiness of projects and the impact that the projects will have in the community and also understanding the benefit from a taxing standpoint. And we have to balance the benefit today um, versus the benefit in the future. And of course, our community at large doesn't often understand that. So we have to continually educate our community and the region on what we do and why we do it and the impact that it will have over the life of the project. Obviously, a board member, you know, we look for them to have a really true appreciation for the community that they live in. Obviously, be a city resident, which is a prerequisite. Um, and I think that's a given. I think everyone that has applied and we're going to interview tonight fits that bill. Um, understanding of the Albany's real estate market. I don't know that I will be a board member forever. Um, and understanding the real estate market and the, the, the development behind that and how it happens, I think is, is, is really critical. It can be learned, but if we were able to find a board member in, in our interviews that understands how it happens and what's behind the financing behind a project, um, it's, it's really important in terms of learning the learning curve. Um, in understanding why we have to provide the incentives we do. So many people feel that, you know, we provide too large of a, of a tax benefit, or I think we, they think we write a check. We don't write a check, as you all know. Um, we're, built, we're, we're providing building blocks for the future uh, tax revenue for the city. Um, and then I guess just a final two quick comments would be a, a vision for the city. I'd love to hear the applicant's vision for the city, what they'd like to see changed, what they think's working. Um, and then uh, ethics, of course. I don't want to really end with that because I could have started with that. Um, but we really prior prioritize transparency, integrity, and accountability. I mean, we recruit ourselves when we think we have anything um, we talk about a potential conflicts. We make sure that um, we're clear on when we can weigh in and when we and, and when we can't. So I appreciate the opportunity to participate tonight, and I'm looking forward to meeting the candidates. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Tracy, and thanks for all you have done for the city. It's so greatly appreciated. Um, thank I, you. I, we could get a sense of just uh, the amount of time that is spent in, in the, these tasks. So we really appreciate it. And you too, of course, Sarah, very much appreciate the work that you do. Um, I should point out one thing though, Tracy, we, uh, you mentioned two candidates and we were just talking, uh, I was talking to JR, uh, our council. And unfortunately we will have to put out another request for applications for this second candidate by, uh, our, by law. So uh, we, you know, we can, we'll have some good candidates tonight, and uh, but we will be selecting one tonight. I'm can aware I, that. Uh, we are. I, I thought you might have to repost it, Kathy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but these applicants can reapply as well if they're not decided on oh, tonight. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. We can always we can always make a gesture that there will now that there's going to be another opening that a new call of applications and if they would like to transfer their applications for the second opening that is now available so they don't have to do a whole new application if they don't so desire. Awesome. Okay, can, I, can I ask a question? Why why is it that we can't use this pool for both vacancies? Because we when we did the call of application, we only announced one opening, one vacancy. So by law, we have to always announce whenever there's a vacancy and when there's a vacancy. And if it's specific to just one, we have to always redo another one for another. Well, I, actually, it's been council procedure, not by law. But I'm not quite sure why. We, we, you know, we've been able to do it that way in the past. But mm. whatever. 
Okay, um, so before we call, or any other comments or questions before we call in our first candidate, who is uh, Anthony Gaddy. Okay, looks like uh, we're all set. So what we'll do is um, uh, offer Mr. Gaddy an opportunity to introduce himself and uh, talk a little bit about why he's applying, and then we'll invite uh, committee members first to ask questions and other council members as well. I think he had some difficulties um, finding the, the Zoom code. I just sent it to him, so just. Okay. Kathy, can I get clarification? Are we having all applicants wait in a waiting room or are they all on right now? Because normally we would bring them in one by one. We're, they are in a waiting room. Okay, thank you. They'll be in the waiting room. The interview itself will be live streamed. And if it's the desire of the committee, um, you guys um, by law are allowed to go into executive session by the public officer's law to discuss um, each candidate in private. And then once a determ if you guys are ready to make a determination on a candidate, then that would be broadcasted live. I'll let the record show that Councilmember Derek Johnson has also joined us. Well, we had him down at 545 and usually we're running a little late, but boy, for once we're, we're on time. <laughs> He's coming in right now. He is in. Okay. I don't see it up here. Oh, there he is. Hello, Mr. Gaddy. Welcome. Hello. Good evening. How are you? I'm well and yourselves? Doing very well. Good, good. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, put in an application for this position on the uh, uh, Industrial Development Agency Board um, uh, you'll, it, and also the CRC uh, Board as well. And um, so I think what we'll do is start by asking you to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and your interest in serving on this board. Sure. And then we'll go around and ask a few questions. Okay. Well, uh, thank you for the opportunity to meet with and speak with you, all of you this evening. I hope you all are doing well, all things considered. Um, so I'll get started with, uh, my name is uh, Anthony Gaddy, uh, born and raised here in Albany, New York. Um, attended uh, Our Lady of Angels Catholic School. Uh, from there, I went to Albany Academy. Uh, then I uh, attended college at the University of Chicago for a year before transferring to the University of Southern California. Uh, I majored in business uh, or economics in Chicago because they didn't have a business major per se. And then uh, at USC, I took up a uh, major in business with a minor in political science. Uh, upon returning to the area, uh, worked at a couple of uh, uh, key banks, first Albany, uh, some part-time jobs here and there, but just started to re-engage with uh, the Capital District. It is my home. I uh, left again to go back out to Los Angeles for a career in the uh, entertainment industry. Uh, had a modicum of uh, entry-level success. And then uh, I finally returned back to Albany for good uh, when my, uh, my sister uh, became a mother. And uh, I thought it was very important that uh, my niece uh, you know, 
have our heart for one another. Uh, amongst my other endeavors uh, as an entrepreneur was the clothing store under the family name that uh, we opened up a business on Central Avenue. I've also um, had a career in uh, publishing of a magazine locally, uh, just in advertising sales with Spotlight News. That's how I got my start in publishing. And uh, from there, I transitioned into uh, working and launching the uh, uh, Upstate New York Black Chamber of Commerce, which is where I currently serve as president and CEO. Can you tell us a little bit why, uh, more about why you're interested in serving on the IDA board? Well, sure, absolutely. Uh, I feel that um, I would be able to provide a, a unique experience in terms of a perspective, uh, looking forward to bringing opportunities to the uh, capital region as far as uh, business development, economic development, uh, with the uh, focus I would like to bring more um, minority-owned businesses uh, to the area, which is something I think you would be able to do through our engagement with um, the chamber here, which is part of a larger organization called U.S. Black Chambers. And I've always sought to serve my community in a variety of ways, um, uh, mostly through volunteer opportunities. Uh, before I lived in Connecticut, I served on the library board, uh, human rights commission. So being involved in the communities where I come from and where I live has always been important. And so the uh, opportunity to serve this capacity as a part of my career now with, uh, with our organization. I feel like I can also uh, add value to the organization um, as well as uh, bring more minority businesses to the, uh, to the IDA. I'm not sure many of us know about the opportunities that exist within the IDA and the CRC. So I think I will be able to kind of serve as a conduit to our communities to add to a different level of engagement that uh, speaks to the totality of what the capital region represents. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Getty. So what we'll do is go around and uh, committee members will ask questions and then uh, we have some other council members here and they may have some additional questions also. Okay. Um, so I'll uh, invite uh, committee members to ask questions of our candidate. Joyce. Unmute. Hi, uh, Mr. Gaddy, how you doing? I'm fine, Councilwoman, how are you? Good, good. good. So um, earlier uh, when um, Councilman, Councilwoman Fahey asked one of the ladies that they gave her the overview of, um, of what we expect the people, <laughs> the lady said in 2019, there was 41 hearings. That's a lot of hearings. Are you able to attend 41 hearings or close to it? I honor my commitments and I take them very seriously. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what's your vision for what you think the IDA to CRC represent? What's your vision? Um, I would like to see uh, the the, the scope of the city of Albany um, properly represented in terms of how we can uh, continue to focus on economic development throughout all of Albany. So I would like to serve in that capacity to see if I can help um, uh, to accomplish that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Thank Kathy. You. Thank you, Joyce. Other committee members. Council Member Doshe. Thank you very much for um, being here and for your interest in this position. It's a very important uh, position. Thank you. Um, I note that um, you say that you were raised and you, know, you gave your background in Albany, um, but I'm kind of interested, you served on Schenectady. Are you currently serving on the Schenectady County Public Library? Oh. No, no, man. I, I, I resigned in, uh, tw I believe, 20, I want to say 2016, but I, I, I moved back to Albany and I'm, I'm here in Albany. So how long have you lived in Albany now? 
Uh, I've been back in Albany since uh, 2015. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you. You're welcome. Um, I also noticed that your um, other, your owner of Our Town Colony, could you tell um, me something about that and how sure. that came about? Um, I, I started at Our Town Colony as the uh, accounts manager after uh, my time at Spotlight News where I started uh, working in the classifieds and sales. And I uh, you know, moved, moved up in, uh, at, at the uh, Spotlight News. And then I learned, I met the owner of the, uh, the Our Town Colony publication and I joined uh, with him. And then shortly thereafter, maybe about a year into that, um, he decided that he wanted to um, retire. And then um, I decided that I didn't want to take a chance on a new owner coming in and not fulfilling the vision for the uh, growth of the magazine that uh, the previous owner, publisher, and I have been discussing for months. So I decided to, to bet on myself, essentially, and I became the owner of uh, the publication. Thank you. The, um, the other question I have is, I'm trying to figure out if you would ever have like a conflict of interest between your current role as president of the upstate New York uh, Black Chamber of Commerce and um, developers coming before the board applying for um, uh, assistance. Um, and I'm and I'm not. I guess I'm not quite sure what role that organization plays in actually helping advocate for particular businesses? Sure. Um, you know, I, 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 and thank you for the question because I did uh, uh, consider that as well before submitting my application. And that was going to be one of the questions that I would have in terms of uh, if I were to advance in the process, what exactly are, you know, the, the policies around uh, conflicts of interest? Uh, would I have to recuse myself if it was for a member? Generally speaking, we advocate on behalf of our members in terms of uh, legislators, uh, making sure that they are represented on, on that level. I've never represented a, a business per se in terms of its own advancement, um, whether they were looking to expand into a city. Um, our, our job mostly is to introduce them to opportunities. Um, and when need be, they are mostly uh, well represented. But when we're called upon to advocate for it, there's a topic of interest, I believe, in full transparency, full disclosure, disclosure. and if I, I, you know, I need to refuse myself, that would never be an issue, so I guess it really would depend on what the policies are pertaining to topics of interest that exist within your organization, because um, I'm most familiar that that is sometimes uh, a possibility, and in those cases where topic of interest policies state clearly, uh, whether that be uh, full disclosure or recusal, I honor that as well as part of uh, any commitment I take. So thank you for that answer. I, um, since you're saying you don't generally represent or advocate for a particular business, uh, and it's more on a policy level, and it sounds to me like you've never appeared before the IDA or CRC uh, on behalf of a particular entity. It sounds me like you would not have a conflict, but I have to defer to Ms. Reginelli and Ms. Metzner on that. Of course, absolutely. Thank you. Perfectly understandable. Don't thank you for the question. Um, and Council Member Ballard, did you have a, your, a comment or question? Yes, thank you. Uh, and again, I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Gotti, for applying for this position. Uh, I, I do always get really excited about uh, the hard work that's done here, and you see so many people apply for volunteer positions that uh, are not easy, that uh, make some difficult decisions, and that many times are not popular because of decisions that they make. Yes. So I, uh, I appreciate uh, you putting yourself out there and leading with me today. Um, my question is a simple one. If you can just go over again why, what you, how you see your skills and experiencing uh, experiences are uh, fitting uh, and uh, the IDA and benefiting the city. 
Sure. Um, well, as someone who has, you know, started a business, also failed at business at times too, I think that aspect of uh, economic development and serving your capacity lends uh, definitely a perspective in terms of the do's and don'ts, uh, learning the things you don't learn, that you don't know. Um, I also think that, again, the experience of uh, having to start a business, learning about business planning, uh, what's a strong business plan, what are the gaps, um, where are the opportunities for access to capital, how to build partnerships, uh, collaborate, establish mutually beneficial opportunities as often as possible, um, looking at opportunities to uh, expand one's business, knowing when the time is right. Uh, again, also in terms of uh, representing predominantly um, Black-owned businesses, I think that experience has been invaluable in, in, in our first year here. And then I can pretty much, you don't want to discourage a business from starting, but you really need to be honest whether or not there's a uh, viable opportunity. So I think that part is to, to your point about making unpopular decisions. I've uh, had some experiences with those too. And again, um, you know, being from here, I think also as a, as a value coming up from um, underserved communities and, and, and kind of a, uh, building up a career where some of the odds are against you. I think that's an opportunity to set an example also um, of what is possible in terms of seeing ourselves represented at the highest levels of city uh, economic development, government. I think that is a very important aspect that is also reflected um, you know, throughout the capital region. You know, I'm often mindful of the, the fact that for all of our um, mid-major size, we are still the state capital of the most influential state, at least I believe, in the country. And I think, you know, being from Albany, there's a certain sense of pride that I carry and, and knowing that and realizing that and, and doing my best to make sure that this city is represented throughout my travels, throughout upstate New York, representing this chamber, and also how can we pitch the capital region as, uh, as, as a, a possible possibility for businesses looking to start, expand, or, or mergers, acquisitions, and opportunities. So I'm constantly pitching the capital region. I think me being someone who is required to travel to other parts of, of the state and sometimes the country, um, it's, it's a great experience to be able to talk about my city or our city. We're not just small. <laughs> <laughs> Much more, much more. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I, I would like to invite any other council members who may have a comment or a question. Council Member Conti. I'm sorry, um, Kathy. Um, Tom has had his hand up for a while. I don't know if you see him. Oh, I didn't, I didn't see it. Tom, uh, Council Member Hoey. Hello. Um, I don't know if it's just me, but you, you were kind of, your volume was in and out. But I, okay. I I understood most of what okay. you said, and uh, one of the questions I was going to ask was to explain about the, um, the mission of the Upstate uh, Black Chamber of Commerce, but pretty much you talked about that. One of the things that I've noticed, um, you know, I'm on the council just three years now, is um, the IDA has the business that we seem to be supporting is just mostly housing. And I'm just wondering, because you've talked about other types of businesses and stuff, would you be like open um, for stuff? I'd like to see more like manufacturing or more income producing type of uh, uh, businesses that would produce jobs. Yes, sir. Um, especially in, 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 in our poorer neighborhoods. People need jobs and our unemployment rates like over 20%. And yes. uh, so I'd just like to have your thoughts on um, how you would feel about that. Absolutely, thank you uh, for your question. You know, when we when we launched the organization, we wanted to make sure that, you know, it's very common when people, when you're in an organization, people say, how many members do you have? And our goal was not so much to focus on the quantity of our members, but the quality in terms of what types of resources would our other business members need. And if you look at our community, especially the ones that are underserved, but we're looking to establish a presence. There are many types of businesses that are essentially taken for granted in other communities that have more development. 
So, for example, there's no there's no black bank, there's no you know uh, CPA firm, law firm that are large. We have a lot of law firms, but that large, large law firm that says, you know, this is where you do your business. Uh, everything from that to the things as basic as dry cleaning, those are the types of businesses that we're looking to start. Even though we brought in uh, over 100 members in our first year and a half, we still recognize that there are certain um, types of businesses, to your point, that are um, not just job creators, but careers. We talk about more career development do job creation. Um, so that pertains to, that connects one to education, where you have to advance based on the, the level of education, not always, but very often. Um, we talk about community development and the overall context of how workforce development, economic development, and housing also play a factor so that our dollars can circulate within communities as opposed to always having to travel outside of our community to, um, to spend our money. It's not so much about um, the, the low income, it's more about the, the, the amount of consumption and consumer spending we contribute to the capital region. However, when we travel and when we travel our own communities, I, we had a visitor here recently quietly, and we took them around to some of the areas, uh, Arbor Hill, West Hill, uh, Central Avenue, South End, because that's where he wanted to see what the opportunities to establish business, you know, what it looked like. And there were just so many things that when I visited him, he took me to places, not, it was the largest city, but there were all the types of business that when you walk outside your door or you travel not too far, you see them, whether that be a supermarket, uh, as I mentioned, a dry cleaner, an auto dealer, things that are essentially fabrics of most communities where they may have two, three, and four uh, of these things. But we like to just, you know, start with one and, and build up from there so that, you know, our communities um, not just look better, but also feel better. I mean, when, you, when you walk out your house and, and you see opportunities, um, that, that, that brings about a sense of pride in, in community. But when you don't, adversely, you don't feel that same sense of uh, belonging. So what uh, we focused on the, the capital region and upstate New York as a whole, um, believe me, as someone who grew up in uh, Arbor Hill, what happens in Arbor Hill and, and spend a lot of time in West Hill and South End, those are the three neighborhoods that um, as an organization in this city that are our primary focus. And whatever value we can add in connecting them to the rest of the city, um, makes it all that much more um, better for us and for the city as a whole. Thank you. You're welcome. And, and, and we also want to create more homeowners as well, because I think that part of uh, uh, our community is just as important when you're invested in it to take better care of it. So what can we do to uh, create um, a better process of uh, in schools? Uh, we have an abundance of colleges here that we can transition our students from stay out of high school? How do we connect them with internship opportunities um, as well so that they stay connected and they build relationships? And then as, as we build up our businesses, you know, more, more, there's more reason to stay here because you're, you're more, more vested and as well as invested. Thank you, Mr. Gandhi. Thank you. Uh, and then Council Member Conti, you had a comment? Yeah, thanks. Um, you know, I read the article that Paul Grandel did on you in the uh, on the chamber. Yes, sir. Um, yes, and I, it, it left me with a favorable impression. Um, Thank you. But, uh, quick question, and I don't know if you've touched on it. We touched, you know, may have a little bit, but I was just wondering if you had um, any perspective on current operations of the IDA, either positive or negative. Um, you know, one, one of the things that I, I was looking forward to is because I didn't really have um, sometimes it's better to, to have a, an, under, a, an overview understanding as opposed to an opinion. So I, I don't, I'm aware of it. I, I know a little bit about what it does. I, I visited the office, but I, I've, I've seen a lot of the work you do. I, I took some time to go through uh, some of the projects. So I'm 
you know, I, I know more about what you do, but I don't have an opinion of what you do. And I think that in some ways that might um, be, be, be beneficial because I don't come in with this perceived notion. Um, okay. I'm very open to learning as well. Yeah. Have you read their, uh, the most recent or any of the annual reports? Not yet, sir. Okay. There's a lot of information on your site. I know. <laughs> 41 hearings, right? <laughs> Council, Council Member Johnson. Thank you. <clears throat> I just, I didn't really have a question. I just wanted to say uh, to uh, Tony Gotti, thank you for your um, interest in the position. And it's nice to see, you know, a face that I um, grew up uh, <laughs> willing to um, make a commitment to the city. So. I just wanted to wish you um, the best and just to say hello. Well, well thank you. Thank you. I, I don't think I've ever called you Councilman Johnson, but thank you, Councilman Johnson. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Gaddy. We appreciate uh, your application and the time you took to speak with us tonight. Um, we have some other candidates that we'll be sure. interviewing. And we will be back in touch with you. And again, thank you very much for joining us today. Well, I thank you. I thank you. The pleasure was mine. Take care and be well. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Okay. And our next candidate is Joseph Better. So if we could welcome Joseph Better. Welcome, Mr. Better. Thank you so much for taking the time to apply for a position on the Industrial Development Agency Board. Um, what we normally do is ask you to introduce yourself, tell us a little bit more about yourself and why you applied for this position. And then uh, council members will go around and ask you some questions. So thank you so much for coming. And it, uh, I should tell you, you, you will need to unmute yourself. My apologies. I always thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, all of you. Uh, I appreciate it. Um, so just to give you a little background about myself, um, I said my name is um, uh, Joe Better. And um, I've been a resident of the city of Albany for the going on, it'll be nine years this uh, Jan coming January. And um, I work you know, right in downtown. Um, I, I establish and manage contracts and oversee a team of people who establish and manage contracts for the state of New York. And um, the reason I really wanted to um, to join the board, apply and join the board, was that um, as someone who moved here, um, as I, and I mentioned in my cover letter, A, I'm visually impaired, I'm legally blind. Um, I, I found that um, to me, a city was always more conducive to living. And um, uh, I thought that I could bring that experience and viewpoint to the, uh, industrial Development Agency to bring that perspective, but also, um, you know, my background in in contracts and dealing with the private sector had given me some very good insights into um, a lot of how a lot of the businesses operated in the um, in in the state and in different industries and some of the both strengths and weaknesses they dealt with. And while it wouldn't be the same businesses that would be coming before you. Uh, I felt that um, I could bring that experience to uh, help make judgment, you know, uh, judgments for the um, um, IDA. So that was uh, in a very high altitude why I chose. Um, and um, yeah, I, I very much appreciate this. Uh, if, if I could just as a request, um, and I, I apologize to impose this on you, but uh, because of my uh, limitations, I don't see well enough to have trouble reading the names. If everyone could indicate when they ask a question who they are, just so that I'm clear and I'm answering, if if that could be done, I'd very much appreciate that. So okay, and and uh, Mr. Better, my name is Kathy Fahey. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm on the committee. I'm chair of the committee. Mm -hmm. um, and so now I will invite other committee members to ask questions. Thank so you. let's see. Questions from uh, committee members. Council member Doshe. Thank you very much for being here, Mr. Better. My name is Judy Doshate. I'm a council member from the ninth ward in the city of Albany up by Albany uh, Medical Center um, mm -hmm. area. Um, uh, have you, um, do you, I think uh, Mr. Conte, I'm just gonna steal his question from uh, the last uh, interviewee. Um, do you have any opinions about the idea DA and the CRC one way or the other? Um, and, um, and have you read any of their recent annual reports? So uh, I, I'll start with the second question. Uh, I have read through several of your annual reports. Um, I've also read through several of the uh, proceedings that you've been doing. I know it's been somewhat slowed by the uh, COVID as with a lot of things, but um, you know, I, uh, and I think that overall, um, I think what you're doing overall is positive. Um, you know, I think that um, if it were me, I, you know, I, as a member of the board, I think that, um, I mean, there's pro always areas of improvement, but overall, I think what the IDA and the CRC, you know, CRC are doing are helping to invest long-term in the city of Albany. Um, I mean, I can, go into more specifics of maybe, you know, some of the things that I'm, that I might see as improvement opportunities, but on the whole, I think overall it operates very well. If you could give me an idea of uh, one or two. Certainly. So um, one of the things, um, as, as a person who's lived downtown, I um, am a, a condo owner. And um, a lot of the investments that I've noticed have been in um, apartments um, as opposed to condominiums or co-ops. And I definitely appreciate having, you know, more people move into the city. I think that's a very good thing. Um, but I think to um, encourage more permanent home ownership in the form of condos or cooperatives to that long-term investment, which will help build the tax base and, um, you know, bring more people in to, you know, stay 24 hours and to, you know, make a long-term investment such as myself, I think would be one area I would look to do more. And I understand there are some unique challenges, especially with condominiums. Um, uh, new condominium construction is very risky. It's a very difficult thing. So I, I understand that um, it's not going to be in every case, but that would be one area I would push. Um, the other thing I noticed was, in looking at the plans of where you invested, um, there were certain areas, including my ward, um, which have done very well. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I appreciate living uh, where I am down um, has been uh, a very good thing. But um, I think to try and work to expand that to more areas of the city will help further strengthen um, the whole city and you know also trying to work to help people buy into you know they is needing community involvement is key i think that would be an area i would try to expand where the uh investments are done because it does a large amount seems to be concentrated in certain core areas and i understand you have to start in a kind of a nucleus but to broaden that out, I think would be a very good thing. So those, those are, I guess, what I'd say are my two improvement opportunities. Thank you very much. Yep. Comments or questions by other committee members? Uh, Council Member Hoey. Hello, Joseph. Um, thank you again for coming. Um, you touched on something. Uh, it's always been my thoughts that having ownership in the city is more important um, than just having renters because uh, it's a mobile or transient type of population. Um, and I know a lot of our projects uh, don't 
don't gear towards families. It's more singles, um, which in a way is good, but at some point people are going to get married or have children, you know, if, if they so desire. So that's one thing I'm, I, 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 I'm encouraged by that. And uh, one of my questions is, and the IDA, I mean, the original intent of the IDA when it was um, thought up, not just in Albany, but statewide, was to have, help build an industrial base. And for whatever reason, we've given up on this industrial base. And I mean, we kind of know that, you know, you can go buy stuff from China that's cheaply manufactured. Um, you know, they don't have unions over there and the pay rates are low, but we've seen with COVID, uh, simple things like having masks or any type of PPE, uh, we just didn't have the manufacturing facilities to do it. Building ventilators, you know, we had to turn to, you know, Ford to turn their assembly line to, to make that. So I always feel that there's a, a place for manufacturing, whether, you know, what type of stuff um, it is, but I think it builds the communities where you, you have a job uh, in some of our poor neighborhoods, the unemployment rates over 20%. So I'd just like to have your thoughts on that. Um, you know, because for so many years we were kind of offshoring or out of stating, but you know, do you believe in building within the city itself? Yeah, so first I'll actually tell you that what I've been doing for a lot of my last several months, and this is sort of not my usual job, but I've been involved with New York State's COVID response. I'm sort of our point person on, on obtaining ventilators. So um, I, this has uh, been a, a large part of learning the supply chain and the supply chain difficulties we've been having. So I understand completely where you're um, coming, you know, the point and, and I've seen the difficulties. So I, it, yeah, it, it's definitely been something that's been eye opening for me um, in seeing the difficulties as an example, where even though many of the ventilators are assembled in the United States, the components are often manufactured overseas. So there's a real difficulty when the supply chains are cut. Um, I definitely think uh, industry is something we should promote. Um, in, in the job that I've been and in the last, um, what I've been doing the last several months, I agree that is something that we should focus on the issue with a lot of these industrial plants is we need to look at one of the difficulties we, what I've seen is, is supply chain building. Um, to get someone to build some of these factories, you, there's got to be, a, there's often a, fa a manufacturer behind it. There's one component that gets bought into another. So I think to it's good that we look at industry and look at potentially seeing if that's something, especially since industry is, it often now modern industry is so automated, it tends to be more higher end jobs. So I agree. But I also think we need to understand that when we go into an industry, we need to under, know that there's a supply chain that's viable in the country or there's a place where it can go. And um, some of those are things beyond what we can do, but uh, I agree it's something we should look at. Thank you. Okay, Council Member Ballerin. You have to unmute yourself. Yep. Thank you. Uh, thank you again for uh, applying to this position. I know that uh, it's a position that's time consuming and that um, you know, it's not always very popular. Uh, so I, I, my question is actually one that was asked by Ms. Love, the previous uh, candidate. So we're all stealing each other's questions. <laughs> <laughs> flattery, imitation is the best form of flattery. Um, but it, my, it, it's how, how, uh, are you, how are you and are you going to be able to balance all your commitments um, and this additional responsibility? Uh, the, there were four one hearings, there's documents you have to read and prepare for before meetings. Um, and, and, uh, and is this something you will be able to, to take on? 
Thank you. Yes. And, and yes, thank you, Council Member. And yes, um, I will. I actually, over the last several months, um, I, um, I can tell you like my workload actually went up significantly because of what I was dealing with uh, COVID, a lot of the response work, and it is um, starting to recede. And as part of that, and as part of moving up in my, both my job and my own personal life, I grew, I've had to learn how to balance a lot of, um, you know, different things. So uh, for me, I will be able to, um, I have enough uh, flexibility now, especially that we're going, that we're in a better state prepared wise to take on this obligation. And um, for me going through documents, that's often what I, I basically get paid to do that a lot or through my staff's documents. So I, um, that's, that's not a difficult uh, thing. So I, um, I have no doubts I'll be able to manage the workload. Thank you. Other council members? Have any questions or comments? Yes, Councilman Johnson, I just wanted to say thank you for um, considering this post and, and um, being willing to volunteer your time to the city. Uh, we, need, we, we need all the help we can get. Mm -hmm. Thank you again. You're welcome. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Council, uh, let's see. Mr. Better, we are deeply appreciative of you taking the time to apply for this position. Um, thank you very much. Uh, what we'll do now is we will, we were interviewing several candidates and uh, we will get back to you uh, with the, any decision that we make. And, and uh, again, we appreciate you coming tonight. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Council Member. I thank you and thank you all for this opportunity. I appreciate it. Take care. You too. Thank you very much. All right. Ka Kathy? Yeah. Um, before we bring the next candidate in, can I ask a, a quick question that I think Sarah can answer? Sure. Because um, some of the questions relate are, and some of the respondents talk about proactively seeking applications in. Can the IDA proactively seek applications or are they really dependent on projects that go through, you know, some other review process elsewhere and then that come to the IDA for financing? So for the IDA, we do talk about the, uh, the resources available through the IDA as widely as we can. We typically will do that through a professional service agreement with Capitalize Albany Corporation, the umbrella economic development uh, organization. Okay. So Capitalize Albany, will sort of widespread be looking based on our economic uh, development strategies and neighborhood revitalization strategies, go out and actively pursue projects, make them aware of what's available at the IDA. But the IDA is really beholden to an applicant making an application to the process. Um, and then also providing uh, insight uh, on market studies um, as well as overall policy recommendations um, as that group starts to see trends coming through the Industrial Development Agency, they can provide feedback to the Economic Development Organization um, for other programs that might be outside of the IDA's jurisdiction to help, you know, sort of prime the pump for those, those diverse channels to come through. Okay, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's uh, bring in our next candidate, Lloyd Stewart. Hello, Mr. Stewart, welcome. Uh, if you could unmute yourself, please. My name is Kathy Fahey. I'm chair of the uh, Planning, Land Use and Economic Development Committee of the council. And uh, we appreciate you coming tonight to uh, apply for this position on the Industrial Development Agency Board. Um, what we would ask that you do is introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about yourself and also um, and also why you have applied for this position on the IDA board 
and then we'll invite council members, committee members first to ask you questions or make comments and other council members as well. So thank you and welcome. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I just had to turn the sound up a little bit. I'm not a, a Zoom person, um, but my wife is, and that's why you'll see Mitzi up there. <laughs> okay, um, well, welcome. Then thank you. So I don't know if you heard me, we were asking you to just tell us a little bit about yourself why you, and why you're interested in this position, and then we'll okay. have some questions for you. Okay. Um, my name again is uh, L. Lloyd Stewart. Um, I am a third generation native of Albany and a 10th generation native of New York State. Um, I always throw that in because people say 10 generations is a long time for anybody to be able to track. But in New York State, my family has been here um, longer than New York State has been New York State. So that's kind of a, a plus that I try and keep and put out every time I get an opportunity to do that. Um, hopefully it impresses somebody, maybe somebody on this committee. <laughs> but what I wanted to, to um, I figured a question would come up about my experience and the types of experiences that I've had in my career. And I thought, well, maybe what I need to do is look back and see what it is that I've actually done over a 40, 45 year career. Um, I've been a chief executive, an administrator, a manager, a fiscal manager, a legislative representative and facilitator in the areas of executive and departmental program management, fiscal and budgetary development and administration, infrastructure management and development, supervision and elevate and uh, evaluation of new and existing programs, uh, human resource recruitment training and placement as well as institutional organization, known and personal cult, uh, counseling services. Now, most of the competencies and expert expertise that I've acquired have come through three um, major um, organizations that I've worked for. The first being the Urban League of Northeastern New York, um, where I was um, president and CEO for five years there in the early 90s. Um, the interesting part of that is that the Urban League the Urban League was the place that I went to for my first job when I was 16 years old. And it continued in my mind as being a place that worked uh, specifically for poor and disadvantaged people in terms of training them for employment, but also being able to work with people in terms of, of uh, community development and also in terms of starting businesses, getting people back into education. I also left the Urban League with, with an opportunity to go to Africa. One of my, my sacred dreams, I guess you would see, say, is to go to Africa, to see, to live and, and work in Africa. But most importantly, from a child in, um, in the Albany School District, Africa became uh, an obsession with me, I guess you would say. Um, and I wanted to see if Africa actually existed. So I was at the Urban League for four or five years and then I went to Africa and, and the experiences that I had at the Urban League in terms of doing employment and training, in terms of helping assisting people and putting businesses together um, was very, very helpful for me in terms of being able to work in South Africa because the same kinds of programs uh, existed there and the same kinds of difficulties as well in terms of people being able to be trained to accomplish some of their ideas and their wish dreams and wishes. And that's the same kind of pattern that existed while I was working with the Urban League. Um, I was able, when I was in South Africa, to work with a, a newly formed um, community action program that actually wor worked more in lines with what the, what the IDA does. Um, they helped in terms of setting up businesses, they helped in terms of, of uh, training people for work, putting an, an industrial base together, um, and also at the same time working within the communities to try and identify what their 
what their issues were and put together programs. Most of the funding that we were getting came actually from the federal government who gave every citizen in South Africa a stipend to, to build a home. Now, in many instances, that, that amount of money was not enough to buy, to build an elaborate facility to live in, but it did, well, was enough money for them to be able to, to build and live in a, in a one bedroom home. Um, they then could actually put, put money into it as well and be able to expand what they were doing. And finally, the third organization I worked with that allowed me to do a lot of the work that I mentioned a moment ago was uh, Catholic Charities of Rensselaer County. Um, that program only lasted a few years. It was during a period in time when the state of New York was going through uh, what I would call it recession as far as community-based and nonprofit organizations were concerned. So that pro program didn't last as long as we had hoped it would in, in the beginning. But it did give me an experience in working in Troy, which is a neighborhood that I was somewhat familiar with having grown up in this area. And knowing that the problems that existed in, in Albany, in Schenectady, and Troy all have a similar um, thread to them. Um, is something that we, we looked at and we worked on and the experience in one was very helpful in terms of experience of the others. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Thank you. Thank you. This is okay. Kathy again. Uh, can you tell us uh, why you are interested in this position, Mr. Stewart? Well, as I... As I mentioned initially, it has to do with my, my um, and I guess I can actually say it because I don't think I ever had before, my love for Albany okay. and the people of Albany. Uh, most of the families that, that uh, I worked with in the Urban League, that I worked with even in Troy, are the same families that I would work with with, with these programs in terms of being able to identify their needs and the resources that the IDA and the CRC might be able to provide to those communities so that these families and these, and these uh, organizations could be able to begin to develop programs and a needs assessment that they could share with IDA to be able to look at pinpointing the actual resolutions and, and uh, positive things that could take place within Albany spearheaded by the IDA and the CRC. So it, I guess it's the families that are here and my family um, are the, one of the reasons why I wanted to, to get involved with this program. Okay, well, thank you very much. I, I'm gonna invite committee members first to um, ask any questions or make comments. Council member Doshe. Thank you um, very much. Um, Mr. Stewart, we're honored to have you here as an applicant uh, for this uh, particular uh, position. Um, I am impressed, 10 years, uh, 10 generations, uh, that's kind of mind boggling uh, uh, to me, uh, who feels like I've been here for a long time, uh, being about here for about 45 years. Um, I also know um, you to some extent through um, your friendship with Norm McConney. Um, and um, that's a, a major plus uh, in, in my book. Uh, he was a very special person. Yes, um, a plus in my book as well. Yeah, so, um, so, when you talk about encouraging um, development um, and, and determining needs of the community, um, there, is, there, there is a bit of a tendency for um, the IDA to uh, get applicants who are, um, a lot of the, the projects are more apartments, and I want to say a lot of them are market rate or high-end uh, apartments. Um, how, how would you go about the actual process of getting different applicants in the door and, and facilitating uh, support for
for other kinds of projects uh, based upon the needs in the community? I think there are a number, a number of, of stakeholders that have to come together to be able to put those kinds of plans straight. We're talking about the elected officials. Um, we love talking about the community-based organizations and the citizens as well. A lot of work we did when we were working with the Urban League came through the, uh, the tenants associations. Those are individuals who are, who are living in, in, in buildings provided by the city that, well, not provided, but they actually live in. Um, but there's always a willingness and a, and, a, and a dream and an idea that comes up within, with those, with those uh, communities in terms of wanting to do more in terms of starting a business or want to do more in terms of wanting to own a home or things along those kinds of lines that the city is not able to do exclusively by itself, but the city would have to be a partner in there. I think it's a partnership that you have to put together to be able to identify actually where communities are. There are problems that exist in Albany that exist in many communities around this country, but Albany also needs to sit down and say, well, how do we begin to address some of the, the issues of violence, the issues of crime, the issues of education? How do we put those plans together? Who do we call on to do that? Who takes the lead in terms of being able to say, well, I know these communities, I know where these communities are. I know what the issues are that exist. Getting those communities to be able to open up and tell us what it is that they want, how they, how they feel in terms of the dreams they have for the city. How do we expand the resources that exist within Albany? All of these issues have been laying there for years and years. Every once in a while, it seems like we get a, a boost of energy in the city and the elected officials and the community organizations come together and try and make something happen. Some initial initiative takes place. Usually in those instances, it comes from the state or from the federal government. But I think it's time that we begin to look at what issues, what programs, what initiatives we can put together as a city and begin to actually address what the people in communities, uh, disadvantaged communities, communities that have been marginalized because of location, because of lack of resources, because of, of lack of housing. How do we begin to actually open the door and bring, and bring in those individuals who have been here for years, whose families have been here for years, and the plans and the wishes and the dreams that they have are still valid and are still there. And I think it's an opportunity, if nothing else, for them to be able to come in and be able to see that there's more to the IDA than just something that they read periodically in the newspaper. Thank you. Kathy, are you on? Sorry, everyone. I was going to say other committee members first, please. Uh, Council Member Howie. Hello, Mr. Stewart. Thank you again for coming and uh, taking time for interviewing. Uh, very impressed by your resume. I saw you. Uh, I worked at the university and worked with the construction fund, and I saw that was one of your uh, your uh, previous jobs. Um, one of the things that uh, I like to look at is the IDA was um, developed to come up with industrial development. Uh, you know, and what's happened over the years is as industry has moved out of the state, out of the country, um, the IDA has geared more towards uh, projects like apartment houses. And uh, I have a, a couple of questions. My first one is, you know, I always felt that condos and co-ops where people own part property where they live is important for community building. And I just wanted to have your opinion on that. And my second question is, um, I'd like to see us get back into manufacturing. Uh, during the COVID crisis, we've seen you couldn't even get face masks. Uh, we're trying to get stuff from China. The uh, transportation just wasn't there because of the crisis. Uh, I feel we don't do enough at home. I mean, uh, and when I say at home, in New York State and in Albany, it'd be nice to see uh, development in businesses that produce 
and offer jobs. And uh, we know that unemployment rate in our, our poor communities is well over 20%. And we need to be able to get people jobs. And I think if you got people jobs where they have something to look forward to, maybe the violence would, would drop, but that's another uh, topic. But so I'd, I'd like to know the two things on uh, co-ops and condos and about uh, manufacturing. Well, I would think co-ops and condos are one issue and one avenue that people can take in terms of being able to redevelop an organization, a city. Um, the problem sometimes is the community people look at look at that in terms of just being another effort of, in terms of gentrification. What is it, what happens with the people in the community who have been there for years and years, and there's no opportunities actually that are available for them to be able to make that step towards owning a home of their own or getting a job or getting the training that they need. I think if you could begin to look in terms of industry, that's how Albany started. That's how most of the, the cities and towns along the Hudson River in particular all started with the industry. And it's an, it's a, it, it is that the industry has gone away. All this manufacturing still is taking place. The problem is there's no incentive to be able to do that industry within an area of Albany at this point in time. It's not on the agenda. Um, and it's what I was talking before in terms of doing a needs assessment, not just for the individuals, but for the city itself. Um, how do we begin to make development work in terms of the South End? How do we take those, those uh, old buildings, the manufacturing buildings that exist in North Albany or in Arbor Hill, how do we turn them around in terms of being, being places of, of uh, economic growth and development? We have to begin to say that, that this is a plan that the city is putting together. It's not something that the IDA on its own can do. The IDA actually can provide some resources that are very instrumental in putting these, these, uh, these plans, these buildings, these offices together. Um, the industry has become an issue. Um, and even when you look at it in terms of what's happening on the national level, there is a lot of conversation that you get in terms of, of um, industry. Um, numbers of fudge industries are, 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 that are not existing. People talk about, let's start this industry, let's get this working. And the issue actually dies after an election takes place. So what I said before in terms of it being, being a, um, an effort, that needs to be taken. That needs to take place within the holistic nature of the community. That not only the elected officials come together in the IDA, but the people who live in those communities also should have some say in the kind of effort, the spearheading those efforts that take place in terms of developing um, those kinds of uh, industries. Um, I think most people just say, "Well, I don't know much about industry." But there are people all over the country who do, and people all over the country who have, who have been successful at doing it. And it's usually those cities that have been industrial cities 100, maybe 150 years ago, who are now finding that as a new resource for them. And I think that's something we probably we need to put the focus on in terms of, uh, of making happen. Are there, are there any programs? Are there any um, developments that are taking place in Albany now with the supported IDA to focus themselves on, on industry? Um, Is the IDA funding industry-based proposals and initiatives? I think we need to begin to ask ourselves, what have we been doing? What is our objective? What is our alternative in terms of increasing the, the tax base and also the providing of jobs for people within the community. What are we doing through the IDA to make these kinds of things happen? What is the history of the IDA in terms of being able to make these kinds of things happen? It's a question that we need to all ask, ask ourselves as we go through this process. Thank, Thank you. you. Council Member Ballerin. I, uh, I just want to thank you again for applying for this. Uh, this is a that uh, 
is a decision that's not always uh, popular. Decisions that are made are not always uh, well taken by uh, many individuals. Um, so my question is, how will you be able to balance your current responsibilities with the new, uh, new role uh, in the IDA? Well, as I look at it, one, I'm retired. <laughs> Two, most of my work now is working with uh, not-for-profit organizations around the state and around the country. Um, I have worked on two uh, public benefit corporations for both the city and county of Albany, the airport authority and the convention center authority. So I have a pretty good idea, or at least, a, uh, yeah, I think I have a pretty good idea of how these kinds of corporations work, what the time, time effort is needed, um, being able to, to re reprogram my schedule to participate in, the, in uh, the work of the IDA is not a major um, difficulty to me because I've done, I've done it with the airport authority and I've done it with the convention center authority while I was running two major organizations. So the history and experience in doing that kind, making those kinds of effort exist uh, in my background. Thank you. And I do want to say you should be very proud of being a 10th generation New Yorker. <laughs> I'm a second generation New Yorker and I got another one right after me and I'm proud of our three generations here. So good for you. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I knew it would click with somebody. Well, I, I want to know the year. <laughs> the year? I have, I've, through the research I've been doing as far as my family's concerned, we've been able to go, go back to the 1720s. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. <laughs> okay, Council Member Derek Jensen. This is kind of funny here. Um, a little bit of a role reversal for us, but Mr. Stewart, I just want to say um, thank you for your interest in the position. And I just wanted to say um, the answer to one of your um, questions is I know who to call. You know, I know who to call. So I just wanted to say thank you. It was good to see you. Um, you know, I grew up watching um, you lead us, um, lead our city in uh, programming and, and directions. And, you know, I know I speak for myself and a number of other young men that are, you know, just trying to continue the work that you've um, been doing for a long time. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments or questions by council members? Uh, council member Kelly Kimbrough. I'm sorry, President Pro Tem. <laughs> hey, whatever, thanks. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Mr. Stewart, for, uh, for uh, your interest. Uh, we, we need people like you on uh, these boards and commissions to, uh, the, you know, with the community in mind, you have, you have that that historical perspective, you, you know where we've been, uh, so maybe you can help us get to where we need to be. Uh, so, and, and uh, this, this is a question, comment. So I, I've been after, or having conversations with folks from the IDA over the last couple of years, well, I, IDA, CRC, Sarah, regarding both affordable housing and also trying to do something with small developers. I mean, we, we you know, it's fine to have a, you know, a 50 unit building or, um, you know, with these apartments and there's a time and a place for all that stuff, but our neighborhoods are suffering. And so with all these red X's and these dilapidated properties, my pitch has been, can we kind of put something together to deal with, with small development? You know, even uh, to Mr. Conti's point about uh, being proactive, uh, the, the idea of being proactive and pulling together um, groups to, to do the small development. So if you, so if you were chosen to be on the IDA, could, uh, could I trust you to, to get after these folks, uh, to, to, to focus on our neighborhoods? Because again, the big developments are fine, but we need one block at a time. We need to rebuild our neighborhoods. So, uh, that, that was kind of a question and a comment. Yeah. I think, I think that's the kind of issue, um, that the IDA and the city of Albany needs to think about. When I, when I mentioned um, needs assessment, 
the needs assessment has to start coming from the community and the people who live and work in the community, who have been here for years, who've been denied an opportunity or an effort to be able to, to expand their ideas and their interests. Um, small industrial or small um, developments that include housing, that include um, youth programming, that include um, maybe even um, stores and, and strip malls or things along those lines, to begin to develop, develop within the community a sense of ownership, a sense of pride, a bit, an ability to be able to say, we can begin to address these problems on our own. If we were in partnership with the IDA, if we're in partnership with the city and the council, then we can begin to expand, as you say, block by block, house by house. Um, it's important to get out into the community and begin to see um, what it is that they want, what, it, what it, the community looks like. How you turn a community around is mainly based on what the community looks like and what the people inside of that community feel that they need to have that's not being provided for them. That's when that whole issue of marginalization comes in. Yes, we have the community. Yes, you're in the community. Yes, we may have clean up a park here or clean up a park there. But the bottom line is, what are you doing in terms of the economic development of these, of these communities that have been marginalized for decades? Um, and every once in a while, when you get some elect, new elected officials, they speak in terms of, let's start working in the community. Let's start turning the community around. But that's not an effort that can just take place willy-nilly and here and there. It has to be a focus um, effort that takes place between the major, the major um, stakeholders within. And when I say stakeholders, I'm not just talking about the, the major corporations that exist that provide money every once in a while for charities or for United Way or things along those lines. I'm talking about a time effort of people who have been in the community for years and see and know and understand what has been taking place. And it's time just to open that up and give people an opportunity to express their needs and express their willingness to put, make themselves a part of a new direction as far as Albany is concerned. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh Mr. Mr. Stewart, I want to thank you again for coming here tonight and applying for this position and, and uh, speaking to us about your experiences, your background, and why you're interested in this position. Uh, we have some others we will be interviewing, and, um, and we will absolutely get back in touch with you with regards to who is selected. And uh, uh, we are very appreciative of the time you took to join us tonight. So thank you very much. And I want to thank you all for your, your effort and um, um, your willingness to talk to me about this. And hopefully we'll have an opportunity to talk about some of these issues again on a, in a more detailed basis. Thank you very much. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to let folks know that it's five of seven and uh, we are we're about um, 25 minutes behind our um, scheduled interviews. So our next interviewee is Jeffrey Quain. So we want to welcome Jeff Quain. Hi, Jeff. Uh, welcome. Um, really appreciate you coming tonight. Uh, and applying for this position. So what we're gonna ask you to do is tell us a little bit about yourself um, and, um, and, and why you're interested in the position and then we'll go around and ask some questions. So thank you for coming. Absolutely, thank you, uh, Chairwoman, and, and thank you council members for the opportunity uh, to interview with you. Um, I'm Jeff Quain. I uh, began my career with the State Assembly. Uh, I worked for the Assembly member out of the Binghamton, New York area. Um, I spent the first few years of my career uh, commuting back and forth between the Binghamton area as well as Albany. Um, and uh, I had an opportunity a few years back to uh, join the administration of, of Governor Cuomo. And at that time, uh, I made the choice 
to become a permanent resident of the city of Albany. Um, when I moved up here full time, I wanted to stay in the city of Albany. Um, and uh, I spent two years as his capital region representative um, covering the eight counties in the capital region, uh, including Albany County and the city of Albany. And um, I recently left the administration at the beginning of the year uh, to join J Strategies, uh, which is a local firm based out of Albany. Um, and I'm still planning on, on staying in the city. Um, you know, I was able to get a firsthand view during my time uh, with the state to really see the work that has been put in um, by the city administration, by the city council, by Capitalize Albany and the IDA um, to really create momentum for the city uh, through a number of different projects and initiatives. And, you know, I think for a while there, we had uh, a real uh, sense of momentum. There was real excitement on the ground. Um, you know, folks I talked to, um, folks I talked to at the, at the state, um, at the city. And uh, as you're all well aware, um, you know, the COVID pandemic hit. And I think, you know, not just for the city, but for everyone, uh, a lot of things really came to a grinding halt and have put a lot of question marks up uh, as to, you know, what's next? How do we pre proceed from here? You know, how do we deal with uh, potential devastating budget deficits? Um, how do we keep these uh, folks who have shown interest in investing in the city of Albany? How do we ensure that they are still uh, going to be here? Um, or they are still going to make investments? Um, you know, so that's, that's really where my, uh, you know, one of my main reasons for wanting to join this board is I want to ensure that this momentum that we had keeps going, uh, that we, you know, continue to have development, build our tax base. Um, I want to act as a resource for the IDA board, um, using my experience with the state uh, and what I've seen throughout the region, um, throughout the state to advocate for the city, um, you know, to help uh, maximize the city's potential. Um, and if I may, uh, a couple other things I would like to focus on. Um, if I am so lucky to be appointed to the board, um, you know, I want to make sure that we see equi equitable development throughout the city. Um, I think our, our downtown development in recent years has been tremendous. Um, and it's really turned, uh, turned things around since I was first uh, resident, since I first moved to the city. I wanna see how we can expand that into our neighborhoods. Um, you know, how can we ensure that uh, our, our neighborhoods surrounding downtown are maximizing their, their potential, you know, in Arbor Hill, the South End, West Hill. Um, I also want to make sure that I would be a good steward uh, for the public trust um, and uh, putting their interests first. I know um, oftentimes there has been um, some frustration with folks with what's before the IDA. Uh, that sometimes it doesn't match what uh, folks may have heard at first um, with their application. So I want to ensure, you know, there's consistency throughout uh, what we're doing and, uh, you know, what folks are being told in the communities um, and the elected officials. Um, so long story short, you know, my three reasons are really, I want to be, I want to use my experience uh, as an asset for the IDA board. I want to ensure that we have equitable development throughout the city, throughout our neighborhoods. And I want to make sure that uh, we, the board and myself are good stewards for uh, the public and development in the city of Albany. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Jeff. Uh, now we'll go around and uh, committee members that might have questions. Uh, Councilmember Ballerin. Good to see you, Jeff. Uh, I like the new look. Thank you, Councilman. It's, uh, you know, I, I took the opportunity to, to change my look a little bit since, uh, you know, we've been confined to our homes. <laughs> <laughs> looks, good. looks good. Thank you. I'm going to ask you the same question we've been asking all the candidates. I actually stole Mrs. Uh, Councilwoman Love's original question. Um, it's basically about balancing uh, the commitment of time uh, with your already busy schedule and the additional responsibilities uh, to 
the IDA. Uh, as I'm not sure if you're aware, but there were 41 hearings uh, in the previous year, and uh, it's not just a hearing time, but as you're aware, the time to review paperwork, so forth and so forth. So, uh, how do you see yourself being able to balance those commitments and uh, still keep the highest level of quality? Yeah, thank you, Councilman. Uh, I think, you know, one of the uh, uh, benefits of um, working for the governor and the state of New York is it's a very demanding and also rewarding job uh, that takes up a lot of time um, that allows me, you know, that, that really takes over your schedule. So um, it, it's hard to really balance things. Now that I've moved over um, out of the administration, I thankfully have more time to focus on uh, pursuits that I'm interested in and, uh, you know, really give back to my community um, as I was previously and, and now. So I'm confident that I will uh, be able to balance those demands of both my professional career as well as the IDA board um, and, uh, you know, give my full attention and 100% and to it. So um, I, I'm, I'm not concerned about it. I've, I've had a very demanding schedule before um, and I'm confident that I can uh, balance it and, and uh, be an asset. Well, thank you and thank you for applying and it's good seeing you again. Thank you, Councilman, you too. Okay, um, Council Member Hoey. Hello, Mr. Quain. Thank you for coming and taking the time to apply. Um, I've asked this of all the applicants. It's basically, the, it might get jumbled a little bit, but uh, when the IDA was started in the state, one of the ideas was it was for industrial development. And over the years, as industries have gone offshore to China for cheaper wages and no unions, of course, but um, you know, we've gotten into where we're doing apartment developments, um, which are fine because people need places to live. But I've always felt that um, ownership, especially in a city, and uh, you know, if you go back to the old Dan O'Connell days of Albany, he always felt that you know, home home ownership was a core for a good city. Um, so I was wondering about your thoughts on that. I know uh, condos and co-ops aren't popular in Albany, but they are popular in Saratoga. You know, my, my cousin actually owns three condos up there that he rents out. So I know that they do exist. Um, and my second question would be, and we've seen it with the COVID uh, crisis, that we don't manufacture anymore. You know, we came and do simple things like, um, you know, PPE, like face shields and, uh, you know, masks. And this is all stuff in the new technology world you know, there's, you know, 3D printers, there's all sorts of ways. Industry has changed from the old days when we used to do shirt collars in Troy and, you know, Troy was a big uh, iron center and stuff like that. Uh, I'd like to see manufacturing come back. Uh, and we, we could see the problems whenever you have uh, transportation problems and we're trying to get our stuff from China, it just doesn't work. So i just like your thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah, those are, uh, I think those are two, um, you know, good questions. They really get to the spirit of a lot of the issues that, um, that the IDA is facing. I think home, home, home ownership, of course, is very important, um, you know, for folks to really have a stake in their community. Uh, I will say that, you know, uh, I know many people like myself who uh, came up at one point to work for the legislature have now made Albany their permanent home. Um, and, you know, I think that as folks spend more time here, they develop that attachment to their community or invested in it. You know, they want to see uh, their neighborhood succeed, their city succeed. I think that, uh, you know, as kind of an intermediate step, as, um, you know, younger folks are getting to the point in their lives where they want to buy a house, it's important to have a uh, good quality housing stock um, that's affordable in the city of Albany. Uh, you know, so um, folks can make the transition from, you know, maybe living in, in the areas where uh, there's college housing that's concentrated to, you know, something that's a little nicer, more manageable that uh, they then can transition into uh, having home ownership. Um, you know, I, I know that uh, obviously there's a market for uh, apartments in the city of Albany, uh, in the capital region, many of our urban centers. Um, and, you know, I think what we're seeing is, uh, 
uh, a response to that. You know, there's a lot of apartment buildings that are before the IDA because the market's asking for it. Um, and, you know, I, I would have to say that we're not seeing as many co-ops perhaps here because the market isn't asking for it in the city of Albany as opposed to Saratoga. Um, so, you know, if there's a way that we can, that we can encourage it to continue to diversify our housing stock, I think that's great. Um, you know, as we give folks options, whether they want to be in a co-op situation, they want to be, you know, in a market rate apartment or they want to be a, a homeowner. Um, as far as bringing back industry to the city of Albany, I, you know, I think that's a million dollar question facing us, facing the region, facing the state, facing upstate. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's important as, as you mentioned, um, and especially with a lot of unknown in the future that we, we have everything all in one place. You know, we have jobs for folks in the city uh, where they can hop on a CDTA bus, um, utilize that, go to the bus route and get back home uh, and, you know, hopefully stop at some shops on the way, stop at, at Price Chopper um, on Delaware and, and get that. But, um, you know, unfortunately, I think we're at a disadvantage in many ways, um, you know, as a result of our uh, taxes that comes down from the federal government that makes it very difficult for um, folks uh, folks to want to invest a, a factory here, invest that. Um, I think the IDA could play a huge role there in um, figuring out how we can address some of those competitive disadvantages we have with other states like Texas or, you know, the Midwest where the tax, the tax uh, requirement is a lot less. Um, so, you know, if, if those uh, opportunities are coming before the ID, DA board, I would uh, suspect that we would do everything possible um, to make that a reality, you know, working with the state of New York, working with the uh, Capital Region Economic Development Council, uh, utilizing all those uh, resources that we have, uh, our Empire State Development to, to make that a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Doshe. Thank you. Um, thank you for your interest uh, in applying. I didn't realize that you started out in Congressman Hinchy's office. Uh, I have uh, some connections uh, to him in my, uh, in my distant and not too distant uh, past. Uh, he's responsible for me, partially, partially responsible for me meeting my husband, uh, which which sometimes, <laughs> never mind. Um, and uh, and I and I want to say that I always appreciated your hard work and your outreach, in particular to members of the Common Council here, um, and your enthusiasm when you served as Deputy Regional uh, Director for uh, Cuomo's uh, for Cuomo. Um, uh, I'm wondering if you are familiar enough with um, IDA. Uh, supported projects in the city of Albany to tell me uh, if there's one or two in particular that you think were um, a transformative uh, important projects uh, and if there are any that uh, you might not have been supportive of based upon um, what you know. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, thank you for that councilwoman and uh, I was very lucky to have the opportunity to work for the congressman at the tail end of his uh, congressional career, but uh, it was it was a great place to start. Um, I, you know, I know it's still in the work, works, but I think um, an IDA supported project that could really um, act as a model for development in a lot of parts of the city is the uh, home leasing project on Clinton Ave, uh, which is, you know, taking um, you know, already existing housing stocks, some of, you know, in my opinion, some of our greatest resources of, you know, the row houses and, and uh, brownstones in Center Square and our downtown areas and rehabilitating those as affordable housing projects. Um, you know, it, it's, I know it's still in the works and uh, I may be wrong, but I understand that they, uh, from what I saw in the news that they may be considering, you know, a second phase or expanding upon that project, um, you know, I, I think as we, we talked a little bit about home, home ownership and giving folks uh, the step to moving towards that from living in uh, rental apartments that, that projects like that, uh, where we can, you know, protect some of our historic uh, assets where we can uh, allow for affordable opportunities um, in communities for, for folks to have good quality housing that 
you know, I think that's really hit a trifecta of a lot of different uh, points that I hold important. Um, and, you know, something that's a little more unique than uh, some of the other market rate uh, apartment projects that have come before the IDA and that are going up uh, in, you know, every part of the city, uptown, downtown. Um, you know, I know that uh, a lot of folks in, in the uh, communities have had issues with um, the projects and, you know, a lot of those have been expressed before the planning board. Uh, so I don't know if there's, you know, necessarily one uh, project that I can hold as, you know, something that, that I don't support or I don't find transformative, but uh, I'm certainly well aware of, uh, you know, some of the vocal um, concerns that folks in the communities uh, neighborhoods, the neighborhood associations have voiced about uh, certain projects. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Love. You're unmute, you need to unmute choice. Uh, how you doing? Thanks for applying for the job. Um, is the firm that you work for, is it a lobbying firm or what does it do? What do it do? Thank you, Councilwoman. Um, it's, uh, it's a strategic firm. Um, we do uh, public relations support, uh, communications, uh, advising. There is some lobbying. Um, I do not do any lobbying personally. Um, I work on national outreach programs. Um, so, you know, we, we do a little bit of everything. Um, I personally work on events and national programs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments by council members? Okay, um, and Jeff, do you have any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought it was Council Member Johnson. He's muted. I think the hand was up from last candidate. It never went down. Okay. Council Member, uh, I'm sorry, Jeff, did you have any other questions? Did you have any questions of us? Um, I don't, I, I, you know, I'd like to thank you all for the opportunity, um, you know, and especially for a lot of the work that uh, you folks have done as well as the administration to really lay the groundwork, um, you know, for a lot of the development between the Albany 2030 plan, you know, the DRI plan, a lot of the um, public input, uh, community input documents and plans that you all have laid out. Um, I think we, as I mentioned, we certainly saw some of the momentum there and the groundwork laid um, and, uh, you know, hopefully things work themselves out with this pandemic and, and we can continue that. Um, so again, just thank you all for the uh, opportunity to interview with you all. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to apply for this position. We very much appreciate it. And we will, uh, we have others to interview and we will be back in touch with you regarding our selection. Thank you very much, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, our next um, applicant is Elizabeth Staubach. Okay, welcome, Ms. Staubach. I'm Kathy Fahey, Chair of the uh, Council's Committee, Planning Committee. Um, we very much appreciate you taking the time to apply to serve on the Industrial Development Agency Board. So what we'd like to ask you to do is uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, and your experience, and why you are interested in this position, and then we will go around and ask uh, some questions. So welcome. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, thank you for taking the time to meet with me. Um, my name is Liz Staubach. I uh, am currently employed with Wildan Energy Solutions uh, under a staff contract with NYSERDA, working on um, the advancement of energy codes for local municipalities and also increased enforcement of energy code 
prior to my employment with Will Dan, which started in March of this year. So one day I do hope to actually meet my coworkers in person and, and get into nicer as offices. But prior to my work with Will Dan, I was the economic development coordinator for six years with the town of Bethlehem, uh, working directly with their IDA, the planning department and the town supervisor, advancing economic development initiatives and meeting and discussing um, opportunities for businesses to grow and expand within the town of Bethlehem. Uh, prior to that, I spent some time um, the New York State Office of Homes and Community Renewal, uh, working in their CDBG program as an economic developer, and spent uh, about four years working in Albany County, um, doing economic development in the county executive's office. So. For about 13 years now, I've worked at all different levels of state and local governments, primarily in the, the areas of economic development and policy. Um, the reason why I'm interested in this is this is really the first time that the IDA has had an opening when I haven't been employed by a state or local government. And this would really give me the opportunity uh, to serve the city in which I live and am raising my family. And so I would really like to take everything I've learned, I suppose, from Sarah's side of the table and uh, be able to, to work and support uh, the city of Albany and their growth efforts. Okay, thank you, Liz. Uh, council members, committee members with questions or comments. Council member Doshe. Thank you very much. Um, I want to go to be able to see her on screen. Um, uh, Liz, for uh, applying for this position, uh, you have an impressive resume. It's interesting to have somebody actually applying that has uh, worked on the staff of an IDA for a period of time, significant period of time. Um, with respect to the Albany IDA, do you have any um, thoughts about what you might change or improve and what you like about uh, what the IDA has been doing. I think I would need more time, uh, you know, serving before I would make recommendations for changing or, you know, uh, revisions. What I do appreciate um, and from what I've been looking into is the project evaluation and assistance framework. I think that that really gives a level of clarity and transparency to an applicant as they begin the process um, and also to the public as well. I think it's very important. I think sometimes there is skepticism of economic development agencies and IDAs. And so being as transparent and laying out those guidelines and making them as public as possible, um, I think has been a really good step for the IDA. I appreciate the other uh, framework and cost analysis that they've also been working on. It was something that I had looked at and was thinking about stealing uh, for, for Bethlehem. So the transparency of the decision making, I think is very important and something that um, I would hope would continue. Thank you. Kathy, you're muted. I'm sorry, thank you. Council Member Love. And Joyce, you're muted too. Yep, I know. <laughs> uh, thank you for applying for the position. Um, again, Sarah said earlier there was uh, in 2019 there were 41 hearings. Um, are you up to um, taking on 45 hearings? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I, I am. I am. I understand the activity that's going on and hopefully that continues. Um, and yes, I, I am committed to, you know, to serving on the IDA and, uh, you know, will make the time and make it a priority to make sure that I'm an active involved member and am prepared and understand the projects and the applications that come before the IDA. But yes, if it's 45 or 50 hearings, um, I am in. Okay. Other questions or comments? Mr. Howie has Council members. Uh, Council Member Howie. Hi, Ms. Storbeck. Thank you for coming and applying. Uh, we appreciate it and, and your time. Uh, 
you know, the concept of IDAs um, were for industrial development. And what's happened over time is as our industry has moved to overseas, to China and to low tax states, you know, down south where there's no unions, um, you know, we've gotten into a lot of our projects are apartment houses. Um, and, you know, one of the problems like with this COVID era is that dense density seems to be a problem with the spread of this disease. Now that doesn't mean that in a couple of years it'll go away, but the idea of apartments creates a transient type of society where people move from one new complex to another, or, you know, they're single. Um, you know, Albany was founded years ago on the idea of home ownership or owning part of the, you know, being part of the city and owning it. Um, and I've brought up many times, why aren't we pushing more for condos, co-ops, where people can't afford to buy a house, but maybe they could afford to buy, you know, an apartment like, through a co-op or through a cooperative. Um, so my question is, you know, we see it successful in areas like Saratoga, and it's probably because of the tax breaks and other incentives that they give up there, but I, I don't know. So I wanted your thoughts on that. And then the second thing is, um, we've seen with the COVID crisis, there was a serious shortage of masks and PPE um, that we no longer manufacture. And these are things using modern technology like 3D printers and stuff, we could have factories that are modern and, you know, uh, ro robotized, um, but we're, we don't seem to be doing that. And I, I wanted your thoughts on that. Is there a way that we could push to get more manufacturing back, um, which would give more jobs to our poor communities that have over a 20% unemployment rate? Thank you. Sure, uh, to address your first topic regarding, uh, you know, apartments, and, um, I am a I am a homeowner in the city of Albany. Uh, owned a home now for 13 years in in Albany, and I think that the use of IDA incentives and breaks for um, the development of apartments has is a good use uh, of IDAs, especially in the city of Albany. Um, the I understand the you know the looming effects of COVID, you know, and the effects of how that does change home ownership and how that does change where people live in relationship to where they work, um, that has yet to uh, be worked out. And I think um, it may be issues in the future, but I think given, given the situation, I think apartments are very important. I understand that sometimes there is the, the impression of a transient population, but I also think that that really has a lot to do with just the changing dynamics of, uh, of careers, you know, people uh, will change careers and they will move and the cost of education makes it very difficult uh, to be paying off student loans and invest in a home. And so I think that the availability of good quality apartments in a downtown urban setting provides Albany with a good opportunity to keep younger people in the area um, and to keep recent college graduates, recent law school graduates um, in Albany and really take advantage of them coming here for them, their education, but then being able to find a nice apartment in an urban area um, and start their careers. So um, I do think that the use of IDA uh, incentives for apartments is important, and especially in, in a city like Albany, where you need to attract additional nighttime population, um, just given the nature of the state offices in downtown Albany. Um, is how to attract manufacturing. Um, you know, I, I, that's, that's such a, a difficult question. In a, in a city like Albany, I, the lack of available uh, space to, you know, build a, the infrastructure or the building or, you know, um, new industrial warehouse space would be very difficult. Um, but I don't know the answer to that. Um, I think I'm not sure. Honestly, I don't know the answer to that. I think uh, if I did know the answer to that, I would probably, you know, 
<laughs> have solved a lot of other problems. But uh, no, I think it's it's a and it's for all of the reasons that you stated, you know, for why uh, manufacturing would leave the Northeast. But I wish I had a solution, but um, I don't, and I, I'm sorry. Thank you. Okay, uh, Council Member Ballard. Yeah, well, first, thank you for applying for this position. Um, this is a volunteer position that is uh, not only very popular and makes some difficult decisions. So uh, I commend you and everybody that's put themselves out there uh, to, to seek this. Um, you have a very unique perspective because you've been in this field and this sector for some time now. So I guess my question to you as, a, as an expert in this, sector, <laughs> what do you see as being the next, uh, next jump, uh, the next, next industry that we should be seeking out? If it's not manufacturing, we can only build so many buildings for so long before, you know, we just run out of people to fill them. And my fear, my fear, and I'm hoping that I'm wrong. My fear is that uh, with the pandemic and everything that's happened, people will be looking for decentralized living. I'm hoping that they'll look for decentralized living from New York City to Albany because we're decentralized compared to New York City. That is my hope. That is my hope. And not that they'll be decentralizing from the city outwards. Um, but what's the next, what do you see as the next big industry that we should be pushing for, that we should be finding incentives to bring into our city? You know, I think one of the things I always, I always thought when I was with the town of Bethlehem was, um, it's, I always found it was more important to, and this is not to dodge, the question at all. I always thought it was very important to nurture and take care of the businesses that you had already. Um, and I do think that is it is important to always be open and ready for the next opportunity for someone who would want to come here. But you don't want to miss the chance to support something that's homegrown because you are out chasing something that might never happen. Um, and one of the things I'd always found uh, during my time is that providing the support to the businesses you have, that's where your growth really comes from. So obviously it's, if it's two different municipalities and the, the differences between you know Bethlehem and Albany, we could be here all night. But I appreciate, I can't say that I think that there's one industry that the city of Albany should be chasing after as much as I think the city of Albany should be nurturing their businesses from the micro enterprises that start with one to two, because five, 10 years from now, they could be your next big industry. And so I think it's really supporting entrepreneurs in, in the city and in the region um, and being there to help them grow. So that way, when they have the opportunity to become that next big thing, they don't even think about leaving. They wanna stay here and they wanna invest in the city that supported them from the beginning. Thank you. Other questions or comments from council members? Okay. Um, Liz, thank you very much for taking the time to apply for this position. I, your qualifications are very impressive. We really appreciate the time you've taken. Uh, we will, uh, we're going to discuss all the people we've interviewed and make a selection and we will get back in touch with you to let you know of our decision. So um, thank you. It's much appreciated. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Everyone be safe and take care. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Now, um, before we get into discussing, before we get off Facebook Live, I, I wanted to, um, Sarah, I, uh-oh, I almost, I lost my video there. Sarah, I was wondering if you'd like the opportunity to, um, there's a lot of, a lot of uh, comments that were raised about the types of applications 
that um, we have here in the city of Albany. Um, you know, Tom's talking about uh, manufacturing, how can we get that started? Uh, talking about maybe too much market rate uh, housing. Uh, other people have brought up, you know, why aren't we supporting some of our smaller businesses through the IDA? Um, you know, we need supermarkets in certain neighborhoods and so on and so forth. Um, I, I was wondering if you wanted to address that a little bit as far as the types of applications that do come before you in the, uh, at all, or Tracy sure. as well, if Tracy's still here. I'm, I'm, there she is, <laughs> either one. Sure, I'm happy to start, Tracy, unless you want, I see that you're on mute. I don't know if you wanna jump in first. Well, I just, I just, I just would comment that, you know, I, I think we do a, a great job through Capitalize Albany, of course, marketing our programs and incentives to create additional investment in the city of Albany. Um, and as a result of that, the applications that come, have come in have been predominantly multi, multifamily housing redevelopments. Um, it, it, and to a large extent, we don't, we, we don't have control over the applica applications that come in. It's market driven based on what is a viable investment and development in the city of Albany, given what's, what's available at the time in terms of land. Um, and again, what the market is, is, is demanding. Um, I, I am really, of course, we're always open to looking at new programs and the potential for them to drive uh, different investment into the city. Of course, that's going to entail additional, um, you know, potential tax incentives, um, et, et cetera. Um, but uh, it is a market driven uh, application uh, project. Sarah? Yeah, I'd like to add to that, you know, first of all, I'm so impressed by the caliber of applicants uh, that are in front of uh, your group today. Uh, it was a really dynamic and interesting discussion across the board. And I think it pointed to the complexity um, of all of these issues and also just the depth that the board members need to have to be able to sort of navigate through all of that complexity. So all of these different issues, um, you know, when Tracy's raising the issue of the market that we have uh, currently, Albany is considered a very weak market city. Um, we have been able to use our programs, um, both marketing as well as incentive programs, effectively to take advantage of the market that we do have to drive investment that uh, does implement uh, neighborhood plans and strategies directly, but also can build toward the future. So a lot of the focus, um, there has been um, demand and thankfully so for multifamily housing in the city. Um, the Industrial Development Agency um, and Capitalize Albany Corporation have really taken that um, as a strategic approach because, um, as some of the applicants had pointed out, being able to capture that market potential, much of which is coming from outside of the city um, as apartment dwellers, does translate into homeowners as the next step out of uh, apartment living as they sort of fall in love with the city and create the environment where people want to be. We also keep pace with national trends that employers, um, and again, COVID notwithstanding, but it, um, you know, it will, uh, Alfredo, I think that you are right. Um, we are starting to see some of those larger city um, corporations and talent looking to smaller cities to be able to decentralize, but those employers are following where their talent wants to be. And so by creating an environment through, um, through mixed use development that drives the density that allows a supermarket uh, uh, site selector or a, you know, another retail uh, tenant, they, they're all about density. They look at the numbers. As we drive our density higher, those places start to look at us. We're able to start to attract those places to build out that full environment that we're looking for through those uh, neighborhood revitalization strategies. So, you know, a lot of this is strategy based. It does seem, um, you know, heavily focused on the market that's in front of us now, but it's how do we creatively use that market to drive those other community benefits um, that we're looking for. The industrial question is a, a, a huge challenge. You know, um, Tom, I want to make sure that we're we're addressing that in this industrial development agencies. Industrial is in the name. We are very focused on trying to create as much commercial development as possible. Residential will help the um, commercial office side, um, but the industrial side really is driven um, by uh, 
you know, the fact that we're a 400 year old city and most of the city is built out. Um, the industrial space that we do have is occupied. Um, we see tremendous um, activity at the Port of Albany, uh, for instance, and we support them heavily um, in, uh, in their efforts uh, because those are the major job creators. Those are the industries of tomorrow looking at sustainable technologies uh, as well as a, as a growth sector. Um, but it's the opportunity for those to be able to locate here because of our lack of, uh, of space. And um, as was rightly pointed out by the council members as well as the applicant, you know, those are, those are national and global trends that we're, we're trying to make the best of and do what we can. Uh, for that. So again, you know, these are incredibly complex issues that uh, the, the board members grapple with uh, month in and month out. And I'm excited to see the slate of, uh, of applicants um, really showing some depth and, and some grasp of the fact that the IDA might not be the right, the specific tool for the specific question, um, but being able to creatively use that tool to find other pathways uh, to success in those areas is really critical. Okay, and any quick comments back by council members and then we'll get into uh, discussing our interviewees offline. Well, not offline, but not on Facebook. <laughs> uh, council member Howie. Yeah, and I just like to respond. I mean, one of the problems, um, I have a 13 year old son in the school district right now and I know you have children and you live right a few blocks away from me. Um, you know, the school is closing down and going virtual not because of COVID, but because we're so much in debt, because we were taking state aid when near, nearby school districts like Niskayuna and everything, you know, so, I mean, we are giving tax breaks and it does affect our school system. Um, so I'd like to see some way, we're building apartments, people move in if they have children and stuff, you're going to overburden even more the school system. So it is complex. I'm not, there's no easy answer or I'm sure we'd be working on it. But these are the concerns I have from my neighbors. And what, I'm, what people are telling me that they see an overdevelopment um, when we really need more market style housing that, you know, people want to live. But the future will, 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 will lay out, especially after COVID. We're seeing what's happening in New York City right now, and it's it's scary. You know, my brother lives down in New York City, and you know, people are scared down there because the tax revenue is going away, and New York State depends on New York City's tax revenue, and you know, people are moving in. You see, the housing in Connecticut is booming, Massachusetts, other areas, and people are moving up here looking for space up here too. So, it's just nobody has a crystal ball. I understand that, but. You know, we need to be able to have conversations back and forth because there is not one right answer. Thank you. Agreed. Thank, thank you, Tom. Uh, so we've been at it for over two hours now, and I think it's time for us to leave uh, Facebook Live, correct, JR? Um, and, just real quick, I think Mr. Ballerin had his hand up real quick. Oh, sir, excuse me, Alfredo, go ahead. I didn't see that. That's okay. Um, and I guess this is a much bigger question, probably for a different day that maybe we should have a meeting with, with the, uh, with the, uh, Capitalize Albany uh, and the IDA. Or maybe we should have a meeting with the members of the IDA and Capitalize Albany to discuss the economic future of our city. Because one of my fears is after the pandemic, how legacy industries that have been in our town, town that have been in our city, how many, how many of these state employees are going to start pushing to, you know, work remotely. And how is that going to affect our, you know, downtown economy? How is that going to affect our commercial properties that we have? Um, so there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, so I'm, I'm not sure if you have any data that, or any information that, that you can share that uh, maybe can ease some of our concerns or maybe heighten them. Yeah, and you know, again, I think you're right that the, you know this is it's a much broader question and something that we're in the thick of right now. So I think we can come back to a more nuanced answer of that. But I think what I'd start out with is that we are very much, um, you know, I think we're coming out of the triage phase uh, of COVID, at least for sort of the first wave, and we're starting to see be able to start to read some of the data uh, and see some of the 
the implications, both national trends and here locally. Um, one of the things helping us do that is that there have been a number of surveys, um, both at the municipal level through our organization, um, as well as uh, at the county and then regional level, understanding the implications on local industry here um, that the pandemic has, has had. And so uh, the Regional Economic Development Council is the last group that has done this through the Center for Economic Growth. We expect to have some results back from, uh, from that group that uh, will be able to distill all of those other uh, points made in, in the previous surveys and be able to provide us regionally a path forward because this is not going to be a local solution. This is going to be a, a regional and state solution and federal solution uh, as we come through. So we are, um, we are staying as much on the pulse as we can um, of, again, national, regional, and local trends. Um, it is going to take some strategic planning to come out of it, um, and we're going to be working with our, uh, our regional uh, partners to be able to develop those, those plans and strategies going forward. Thank you, Sarah. Okay, um, so JR, uh, I guess we're done with the Facebook Live now and we can enter into- I need a motion. Our, our what? Oh, okay. I need a motion. <laughs> pursuant I a motion? to, we go pursuant with to public, public Officers Law 105. <laughs> I make a motion we go into executive session. To discuss. Second, please. Second from Alfredo, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, motion hold carries. On. I, think, I hold on, I saw Judy say something. Judy. Um, so technically we also need to state the purpose of going into executive session mm -hmm. as part of that motion. So is that uh, for a particular- I did purpose? say it, but it, I, somebody talked over me. I said, go into executive session to discuss appointing one of the uh, applicants for the, uh, the board of the IDA. I didn't say it that many words, but I did say that. Well, what it, it, there is a requirement that we state one of the reasons under the public officer's law. So and, that is, and that is a one of the reasons, public officer's law 105G. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, public 105, public, one, public officer's law, law 105F. There we go. And what does it say? A Two. executive session is allowed for the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment of employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. Thank you. Yes. So are we now having a vote? I think somebody... We have a, sec a Just second point from... Oh, sorry. Point of oh, clarification. Okay. Would you, uh, I'm happy to, to stay around for additional questions uh, or feedback. I just, you know, want to know if I need to hit leave or not. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think we're all set. I, anybody have any yeah. other thoughts about that? Alfredo? Can I just say publicly and on the record, we got some great candidates and uh, <laughs> difficult, difficult decisions to say. Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, and Agreed. before, and I see Tracy has left. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to thank her again for being here, but maybe Sarah, you can extend our thanks, well, please. And thank I you. Was gonna, I was going to say, I mean, Sarah or Tracy's perspective on the candidates could be helpful if they. I'm not going to be comfortable. What, what Tom? I'm not going to be comfortable. I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sarah. All right. So we do you want to redo the motion or do, do we still going to carry it? <laughs> um, I make a motion. We go into executive session so we can discuss appointment of a candidate to the I, open vacancy on the IDA board. Okay. Second. Who uh, wants to second? Joyce seconds. Joyce, thank you. Uh, and uh, any more discussion? Judy? No, all in favor. All in favor. Aye. <laughs> Motion right. carries. Okay, okay, thank you. Give me one second. 